I think uh, it's uh, it's been an exciting opportunity to uh, really not create a brand, but bring a brand back and take it to a, take it to a, a, another place. I think it's a, it's a very special brand in the minds of the Australian consumer. Uh, very close connection to community that Ampol's had going uh, going way back, and so uh, it's been an exciting opportunity to uh, for the op- for the company to really um, think about what we want to be in the future. We uh, we have a company purpose which is powering better journeys today and tomorrow. And we're very much living that through the rebranding exercise. It's very exciting for our people to see our network of over 1,900 sites uh, roll out with a a fresh new look and appeal uh, right across our national network. It's really exciting to to launch our future energy strategy and and talk about what Ampol means not only today, uh, which is critical for our customers and our people, but also tomorrow. So it's really the rebirth of a a company that uh, has a very special place in the hearts of the Australian people. You mentioned about the the future and where it goes to. Of course, it is challenging for companies that uh, distribute and and retail petroleum right now because you've also got to have an eye to the future as as to what that looks like um, in terms of electric vehicles, in terms of hydrogen. Is this a, a view where you eventually see yourself becoming something different to what you have been in the past? Yeah, very much so. I think we need to acknowledge that today's uh, business is critically important in a whole uh, host of ways in terms of the fuel security of the country today, uh, including keeping uh, Australia and our customers moving today. But equally, uh, when we look to the future, we do see that whether it's our national infrastructure network, whether it's uh, uh, the very significant customer base that we have, uh, or whether it's the capabilities we have in trading and shipping and managing uh, complex supply chains, we've very much see that whether it's hydrogen, whether it's electricity, uh, we have a very significant role to play in the future. We're not an extractor of, uh, uh, of oil um, uh, as a company. Uh, we're very much a distributor of energy. And I think as you see some of the steps we take going forward uh, into the future, uh, that'll become increasingly evident. Well, one of the things you are doing is rolling out a national um, electric vehicle charging platform. I mean, this is going to be the interesting thing about where do you make the money in the future? And, and do you make a choice? as to whether it's hydrogen or whether it's electricity? Or do you become a little bit agnostic that you've got to be a bit of everything while this transition takes place? Yeah, I think, uh, I think there's a lot of uncertainty as to exactly what solutions and what technologies uh, play out. We would have a view that certainly uh, uh, the electrification of uh, light passenger vehicles is going to be critically important and that's where the EV rollout and, uh, and ensuring that we provide those, uh, those future mobility solutions for our customers is really important. But equally on the, on the heavy vehicle side, I think uh, uh, batteries are going to be more of a struggle, uh, especially in a country like Australia that uh, is about vast distances and long haulage uh, heavy duty travel in particular and that's where hydrogen's going to have to play a role so uh, I think whichever way we look uh, there'll be different solutions for different customers it's important to trial uh, and experiment in some of those areas I think the the asset base and the capability that we bring uh, has a really important to ro- role to play irrespective of which technologies play out in which different ways right now as a company it's pretty easy to see where you make your money and how you make your money, um, you know, retailing and wholesaling petroleum, um, convenience stores, it's pretty simple to see it. In the future, is it as easy to see it with electric vehicles and with hydrogen powered vehicles? Look, I think uh, there's, uh, there's a lot to play out in terms of how the economic models work in the future. Uh, I think what's going to be important, though, is how you can repurpose that, uh, that infrastructure, that distribution infrastructure, their critical assets, and how they get repurposed in the future to provide, whether it's fast charging on a forecourt, uh, whether it's leveraging that uh, into a broader offer at destination or even into home for our customers. Uh, and then uh, on the hydrogen side equally, how do you leverage that infrastructure to find uh, a business model that works at scale. What we see that is uh, the position we have as Australia's leading transport fuels provider, we can bring scale at a relatively early stage to some of these solutions uh, and scale is going to be important to getting the economics into a, into the right place to start moving some of these uh, alternative solutions in, uh, into, a, into production. On the subject of scale, one of the areas where you did a review was over your Lytton refinery in 
in Queensland, in Brisbane. Um, and obviously the, the federal government stepped in um, with a package to make certain that that refinery continued simply because of Australia's need for, um, shall I say, sustainability and uh, for, the, for the need for security for Australia to have that capacity to make fuel. Just explain how important that package was for the survival of the Lytton refinery. Oh, look, uh, it, it was it was fundamental to uh, enabling the uh, the refinery to continue operations, which I think is a really positive outcome for our people, uh, for the for the jobs direct and ind indirectly that rely on uh, on the Lytton refinery, for uh, for our shareholders uh, to find a way forward uh, that could deliver acceptable returns, and and to to work closely with the government on the dual objectives of both fuel security on the one hand, as you say, but also in terms of uh, energy transition. So uh, I think it's a really good example where uh, it's a critical asset, has an important role to play now, but also tomorrow when you look at uh, the fact that Lytton produces around 30 tonnes of hydrogen a day, we handle, uh, we handle it every day today, we've got critical skills in that area uh, and we've got, uh, we've got the capacity up there to trial uh, some technology that we're working with Fusion Fuel Green uh, on a US company around the manufacturing of green hydrogen. So very much with a nod to tomorrow as well, where you look at connecting both the importance of today, but also uh, building optionality around what the future might look like. Matt Halliday, Chief Executive of Ampol, many thanks for your time. Thanks, Ross. Thanks for having me.